Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another installment in the series book <laughs> Today I have another installment in the series Book Recs for Writing, which is where I recommend you a list of books based on a writing topic that we all can kind of struggle with from time to time. I'm super excited to be talking about first person voice because first person voice is my favorite. It's that really close, intimate, immediate, right there alongside with you voice that I, I just, I prefer. <laughs> so I have eight books that I'm gonna be recommending to you today, so let's go ahead and dive on in. The first book that I'm gonna talk about today is a YA contemporary, and that is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertelli. This book is about a very relatable, chubby, socially anxious teenager who has fallen in love a bunch of times, but she's too scared to tell the boys that she's fallen in love with, that she likes them. So we follow her on this self-discovery journey and it's brilliant. The voice is super, super close. It's super quirky and nowadays I was reading this and I was like, wow, this really sounds like a teenager or how I talked when I was a teenager and I really appreciate that because sometimes writers kind of miss, <laughs> miss the bar. Another really great example in the YA contemporary sphere is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This book is told in dual perspective and it follows our main character Natasha who is a Jamaican immigrant who is being deported and on that very same day she meets Daniel and Daniel is a second generation Korean immigrant whose um, future vocational goals don't really match what his Korean parents want of him. This book portrays dual perspective first point of view voice so well because we have Natasha who is very analytical she's very much so a scientist and that comes off very strongly in her voice she makes a lot of like space metaphors and like genetic similes and anything that has to do with science is really really just painted into her voice. And on the opposite side of the sphere we have Daniel who loves poetry and writing and he's he makes poems in the middle of his chapters. He will talk about things like love and emotions and hope and destiny and things like that that Natasha doesn't believe in but that he does. All of those types of things are seen in his point of view and not hers. And I just think that this is just a great book for comparison. I have a lot of contemporaries on this list. I am not myself a contemporary person, but for some reason contemporary authors, man, they really, really nail the voicey thing. The next recommendation I have is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabosky. If you somehow didn't know what this is about, it is uh, about a young boy named Charlie who is writing letters to an anonymous person that he calls you. It's as if he is sending the letters to you as the reader. And he's basically just telling you about his freshman year at high school, all of the things he's dealing with, the traumas in his life that he has dealt with before that are impacting his decisions and life now. It's a, it's an excellent book. Great movie too. Go watch it, read it, whatever. Nowadays in general, I think there is this trend, which makes sense, it's happening in other media as well, but we're not really following the story of young teenagers in YA literature. We're following like 17 year olds, like every single protagonist is 17. <laughs> very unique experience that comes along with being a freshman in high school or being 14 you know you're kind of on that cusp of being a teenager but also you still kind of feel like a child but you want to be accepted as a teenager and kind of like treated with more responsibilities but but you're still not like completely there yet right and that's a very hard voice I think to tack down and I think Steven does it great in here. Charlie's perspective of the world is really colored by not only like his mental illness and his experiences but also like by his age and the fact that he wants to explore and learn things and grow and I just love that and I think if you're writing a coming of age story that this this is a great one to check out. Now I'm gonna move on to Ruth Ware. I honestly feel like you could read any of her books but my very favorite and to me the most voicey one is The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I love this. This is about a girl who is kind of a cheat and she just makes money however she can. She is a tarot card reader and the fact that she reads tarot cards colors every single part of the rest of the book. Anytime that she um, feels something, she thinks of the cards, she thinks of what they mean, she reads for herself, she uh, makes comparisons to the cards, like to, uh, she compares other people like to the cards, if that makes sense. It's maybe it's something you just need to read, but it's excellent. I also have to mention Gillian Flynn. I think it's her, like I, I just think it's Gillian's voice on her own. She has a very specific and close way of writing characters. She chooses these perfect words, the perfect adjectives, the perfect adverbs, just 
just to paint a picture. And I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but if you've read a Gillian Flynn book, I think you might know what I'm talking about. There's a je ne sais quoi about it. <laughs> that being said, I feel the same thing about Taylor Jenkins Reid, whether it's her Daisy Jones and the Six or Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, mainly that one. I think that one is probably my favorite of the two. Um, I haven't read any of her other things, but these two had a really great voice. These are better examples of like how authors infuse their first person narrations with their voice and not necessarily the character's voice but theirs. Does that make sense? Maybe I should have put them in another video. I'm gonna leave them in here because I think they're both brilliant and you should check out at least one book by both of them. Going along with the main characters kind of telling their own story, I have The Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvel. This is a story about a little girl who finds this really large strange hand in the middle of the woods and then all of a sudden other very large strange body parts start popping up all over the world and people are kind of freaking out because they don't know if it's aliens, if it's a prank, or if it's something godlike and supernatural. This entire book is told in interview format and you would think this would be really dull and really lifeless but boy oh boy is it not. The characters in this book are so strange. <laughs> like they all are very different and they come from very different walks of life. Like we have some scientists, we have some military people, we have some like weird clandestine assassin people, and obviously they're all gonna have different perspectives here. And because of that we get their voices through this and it's just, it comes off brilliant. Like you can really tell when someone talks the reason they're saying the things they're saying is because they have a military background or the reason they're saying the things that they are is because they're a scientist and they're smart and they have a great idea for molecular theory that's going to solve everything. Again, just another stellar comparison if you're looking for something that's a little bit more kooky and out there and sci-fi great example. The next book I want to recommend you guys is The Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Valley Doyle. This takes place in like a creepy little small rainy Irish town where there's some like witchcraft things going on and a group of teenagers find a spell book and like a whole bunch of shenanigans ensues. This book is told in multiple POVs as well but the really interesting thing about the comparison between all the voices is that the home life of the main character really tints the way that they view the world. We have one narrator who has a really close family life. We have another one who's kind of like a vagabond and travels around and had like a kind of terrible things that happened in their past and it really reflects the world really well. And again, this narrator does the same thing that Becky Albertalli does in The Upside of Unrequited where there's just like such this teenagery feel to the book. So that is it. Those are all of the first person voice books that I think did an excellent job at the subject. First person is really hard to nail, man. Like you have to work hard at it. I have to work extremely hard at it. I know myself. So reading books that help me see examples is always the best way to learn for me. So read these books. Let me know down in the comments if you have any examples you think that I should add to the list. Let me know what you think if you have read any of these yourself as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!